Good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming this evening. It's uh, 7.01. Uh, I'd like to call to order um, the special committee meeting of the License, Permits, and Franchising Committee. Um, and the sole purpose of this special meeting is to discuss uh, video gaming in the city of Palos Heights. Um, I have a couple opening statements here. Uh, first, again, I'd like to say thank you and welcome uh, to everybody in attendance this evening who's taken time out of their busy schedules to come and express their views or to listen and to find out um, uh, more information about this matter. Uh, I'd also like to express uh, my thanks to everybody who has submitted emails. Um, and we'll talk about that later on, or I'll, um, I'll tell you more about those in the public comments section. Um, so to begin with, um, I just wanted to kind of uh, tell everybody where we're at. So uh, this matter, so currently in the city of Palos Heights, um, video gaming is prohibited. Um, so businesses cannot have um, the video gaming that we see in, in businesses uh, all around Palos Heights. Um, this matter was brought to referendum on November 6th of 2018. Um, there was a vote tally of uh, 1,240 uh, voters in favor, while 1,670 voters uh, voted against, or 42% for, 57% against, so this uh, matter failed. Now, I just wanted to um, tell everybody what the referendum is, if you don't already know. It was a non-binding referendum. That means um, that if it did pass, it was still up to the city council whether or not um, they would allow video gaming in the city. Um, and if it didn't pass, uh, if the city council at a future date uh, decides to allow video gaming uh, in the city of Palos Heights, this matter does not need to go back to referendum. Um, that being said, uh, this matter was presented to the voters um, to solicit their feedback. So a prior city council wanted to find out um, take the temperature of the residents of Palos Heights and see if uh, this is something that they would be um, interested in having in, in their city or, or not. Um, so um, that being said, the matter this evening, uh, Alderman McGov McGovern, excuse me, has brought this matter to the City Council um, for reconsideration. Uh, now Alderman McGovern has done an awful lot of work um, researching our neighboring communities, uh, researching uh, various ordinances, um, and he, he has uh, constructed a draft ordinance that uh, provides a parameter of what he's asking uh, the city council to consider. Um, he brought this to the full city council, and the mayor uh, thought it best to refer this to committee, this committee, uh, to do the legwork to figure out uh, what was to be done with this matter. Um, in discussion in our uh, committee meeting, we determined that because this matter was presented to the voters uh, for their consideration, um, all of us felt that it was imperative, it was imperative to um, come back to the residents and uh, get the feedback again um, to see if anything's changed. Um, so you, we asked for your say in uh, November of 2018, and we're asking for your feedback now. Um, so the way this is gonna go, I have a, I have a statement from the mayor that uh, he's unfortunately out of town, uh, but he did uh, write a statement he would like to have read, and then I'm gonna refer uh, to Alderman McGovern um, to kind of explain um, some high level about uh, the proposal that he would like to bring forth, and then we would like to open it up to public comment. Um, when it's your turn to come up and speak, please identify yourself uh, by name and address. Um, we'd like to uh, limit this to five minutes of public comment just to give everybody a chance to speak and that we're not here until uh, the daybreak. Um, but uh, sometimes they, you know, they, if you have questions, uh, we can answer what we can answer and uh, you know, we'd love to have the back and forth, but let's give everybody a chance to speak. Um, and if you have any questions, just come, when you come up, you can ask. So without further ado, um, from Mayor uh, Bob Straz, uh, he would like to say, I am opposed. I oppose video gaming in Palos Heights. To me, it is a matter of image. As Palos Heights has become known for its fine restaurants, such as Capri, Harvest Room, Franklin's, Cafe's, and in some pizza circles, Joe's Italian Villa, why would we want to add video gaming to that image? 
Restaurants have been successfully delivering their main product, food. I also feel that it is not truly representing the people when we win not more than one full election cycle, we are looking to go against a 57 to 43 referendum percent, excuse me, referendum vote not to approve. The comments that only 47% of registered voters voted is not germane, considering that 47% is more than three times the highest turnout in the past three municipal elections. Those results are not disputed. The fact that this ordinance comes with additional restrictions makes me feel that we are just trying to um, get something approved, not for the residents, since we know their thoughts. And with that, I'd like to pass to Alderman McGovern to uh, describe what uh, is in his draft ordinance. Alderman McGovern. Thank you. Good evening, folks. Thank you all for taking out your time tonight. I know this is a Monday night. You guys are just out be coming back to work and everything else, but it is really nice to see so many of you show up. Whether you approve, whether you disapprove, I just want to listen to what you have to say also. But just to give you a brief idea of what we're talking about, I'd just like to start with letting you know. Okay, first off, video gaming in the state of Illinois came into effect in 2009, okay? Um, <clears throat> two months later, in 2009, Palos High put out a city ordinance, which they're allowed to do under the state gaming law, banning video gaming in Palos Heights. Okay, since then, we have had many many several adjustments to the state gaming law. That's what I really would like to discuss, okay? Uh, the, poss the possibility of an ordinance to give class A and class F only liquor license and let the owners have their opinion whether they want to apply for a license or not, okay? I did go out and study 10 of our local suburbs. I got all their, all their gambling facts. I, got the, I used the Freedom of Information Act and got all their ordinances. And I assembled them all together and I read them all, studied them all, and as Alderman Lewandowski said, I did write myself a sample of what I think the video license for the city, city of Palos Heights should be. I did, I gave it out to each one of our aldermen for them to read and so, and, and So anyway, in, included in that ordinance, I made sure to put in some very specific rules. First one, and the most important one, is there will be no outdoor advertising, no advertising of anything that will be seen from the outdoors. What you saw on any of our business districts tonight, if we were to have video gambling, you would still see that same street looking the same way after we put our laws in, our ordinance in. We are not going to allow people putting banners all over the streets, signs going up and down, round and round. Little pretty signs up there that says slots for here and slots for there. If you have a out, if you have a glass window, you better not put a neon sign on the inside of the window that can see out. That's how clear I want that street to be. Now, second part 
is going to be also very simple. The gaming portion has to be separate from anything else. Excuse me for a moment. It must be recorded. Okay? <clears throat> it has to be so secure in a secured away in such a way that no one under the age of 21 it can be allowed in. And it has to be monitored by a person at all times. The next part of it, those little video gaming cafes are going to be prohibited. Now, as Brent said, it was 2019, there was a non-binding referendum, and it was defeated. Okay, and like the mayor said in, in the statement had said, okay, the, the exact number of votes were 3,300 in 19 for, 2,522 against. And we had, of the voting population of Palos Heights, 3,660 3, people did not vote. Why? They just didn't vote. That's all I can tell you. I didn't ask 3,660 people why they didn't vote. <clears throat> Shortly after that, two months after that, the state decided to expand their video laws. Okay? And in 2021, they've just expanded it again. Okay? We have 20 video casinos or 20 casinos, full, full, full run casinos in the state of Illinois, all the way from Cairo, all the way out up the state line, wherever it ends up there. Um, now we're going to get four more. Those four are going to be in Chicago. One's going to be in Chicago. One's going to be in Waukegan. Another will be in Rockford. And the last one will be right here in East Hazelcrest, partially, it's dual between East Hazelcrest and Homewood. And they were just awarded all these. So that will bring the number of full-fledged casinos to 24. Now, as far as a casino goes, if you want to get in your car today and take a short little ride, whether you go Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Iowa, you can go to any one of 25 casinos, go up and back in a day. But these are the full-fledged casinos. Gambling is now a one billion dollar business in Illinois. It's not small business. It's not, it's, it's not the days of Al Capone. It's not any of that. It's legal business. And Illinois just happens to be the fourth largest state as far as video, uh, video gaming terminals are. We've got over 46,000 in the state of Illinois. Here in the Southland, we got 17 municipalities surrounding Palos Heights now. Palos Park just passed their, their law for starting out with Cog Hill Country Club. And it's not completed yet. They're still discussing on what, whether to turn around and continue on. Add to the 17 municipalities. Don't forget, unincorporated Cook County did it too. Now, 
You want to go to the ballpark? You want to go to the, ball, the window, just like at the racetracks? You want to go to the window and make a bet on the games you just paid, paid to go into? That's starting. Betting windows right inside any one of the sports facilities. It's legal. And if we don't allow video gaming here in Payless Heights, we're going to lose revenue. We're already going to get some revenue when this East Hazelcrest and Homewood casino opens up. We are among the local communities that will be allowed to get a percentage from the communities. So we're, get, we're already getting budding money. You know, as far as the restaurants go around here, we don't have any corporate restaurants. You see any lettuce, lettuce entertain you restaurants around here? Hmm? You see any, do you see an olive garden here in town? Red Lobster? Nope. We have local businessmen putting their own monies up and starting fresh. Some of them have been fortunate to be here for a long, long time. Some of them haven't. They're just as hard a working person as you are. Matter of fact, some of them are putting in 15, 16, 18 hours a day before they can go back and do the paperwork to turn around and justify what, uh, everything else they have to do. I'm just asking you to give them a chance, okay? Let them bring back some of these customers that they lose because they're not only losing customers to video gaming, they're losing the food the drinks, and everything else that goes with it. <coughs> Let them have the terminals. That's all I'm asking. <coughs> they just went through two and a half years from COVID. Open, close, open, close, open, close. Stretch it out. Oh, no, now it's okay. We can do carryout service, okay? Now, well, let's, okay, we'll let you open it up. But your tables have to be six feet apart. So you can, you're only putting it the most probably at about 30 or 40 people inside your restaurant. As far as the gambling itself, welcome, welcome to 2022, okay? Want to go home? <coughs> Grab your cell phone. Grab your computer. Grab your Kindle. Okay? Your home computer. As a matter of fact, if you take your cell phone, why don't you just go down to one of these bar, uh, bars down here, these restaurants down here, and sit right at the bar. Take your telephone out. Call any one of these betting com companies up and make your bet while you're sitting at their bar having their drink. But no, we can't let them have a video gaming terminal in there. If you don't know how to make a bet on the telephone, turn your TV on. The last week, every hour, I watched at least four commercials on how to bet. From DraftKings, uh, uh, Bet Rivers, uh, all these other companies. They'll actually teach you how to turn around and make a bet from their phone. For these licenses, with, first you've got to have a liquor license to get the gambling license. We all know that. That's part of the state law. Okay, but to get it, you've got to fill it out. Maximum right now is six. six terminals per business. 
we've only got 17 businesses plus the golf course. I mean, we're not going to make a gazillion dollars off of this, especially the city's not. They only get 5% of it. Okay? The owner gets 35%. I think the vendor gets 30%. The state gets 30%. And then we get the last five. So, and as far as that goes, what my hope would be, I've got two ideas for it. One, we go right back into the business district. The money. They go right into our, we've, we've got what we call a, a business improvement program and a, a, sign, a sign grant program. Take a slice of that money and put it right back into the district to keep improving what we have out here in Payless Heights, what our buildings look like. The other possibility is I've been looking at and don't know about it yet or anything else is as far as all of us, maybe we can somehow figure out a way of reduction on our city vehicles. I don't think there's going to be enough money available for us to reduce our taxes or anything like that. But I think we might be able to find a way to reduce our city vehicle tax. That hits everybody with a car. Every car. So, and, you know, in my closing, I just want to remember, show you one thing, okay? Remember these signs? Remember them? Support local business? Hmm? This was during the COVID sign. COVID problem. We had to support our local business. Do everything we possibly can. Well, I'm doing my part. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman McGovern. Um, I did neglect to make up. Oh. My, I beg your pardon, I did neglect to uh, inform everybody that this is being recorded and will be broadcast on Wednesday on both Channel 4 and on our YouTube channel. Um, and with that, I'd like to invite anybody who would like to come up and uh, make a public comment. Again, please remember to identify yourself and your address. Um, and we got a five minute limit, but we'll be a little flexible on that. So I welcome, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman and Alderman, uh, Alderman McGovern. Uh, my name is Karen Hayes. You want my address? 12606 East Navajo Drive in Palos Heights, a longtime resident. Um, uh, first, I was just going to read a quick statement, but I just want to thank uh, the Alderman for kind of making my argument against video gambling in Palos Heights, because it sounds to me like you're making the argument that there's way too much gambling in Illinois and in the surrounding areas. And I'm, I'm all for freedom, and I think people can easily get plenty of, of gambling, as you said. Uh, with home gambling, are, are you making the argument that, that people will go and eat somewhere and then do the gambling instead of sitting on their couch? I, I'm just not understanding sometimes what, what that argument is, except to say that if, if you're, you're saying, which I think you said, uh, Alderman, that uh, with all due respect, you said that people were going to not uh, spend money on food and rather they were gonna spend it on video gambling. I mean, you could do that in house in the same restaurant. I mean, it's, we have a family of restaurant owner, uh, with owners in it and a lot of small businesses in our family. I understand that. But I, I just don't think that this is what a good reason to have video gambling here in Palos Heights. Um, I've been opposing this for many years, as was outlined as far as the referendums and the city council meetings and everything. And there's been a lot of arguments in favor of trying to do this proposal. One of them has been, well, it's just entertainment. Well, if it was just entertainment, we wouldn't be here today. It's a highly addictive form of gambling. Video gambling has always been 
uh, even referred to as the crack cocaine of gambling because of its highly addictive nature. And I remember at, the, at a city council meeting a couple of years ago, not too long ago, where we were having city, we were having signs all over the city welcoming students and parents of Trinity Christian College students uh, and asking them to, I think of the Chamber of Commerce might have sponsored them, and they were asking them to, uh, you know, or inviting them into uh, local businesses. At the same time, we were asking uh, for, or, or somebody, I, I don't know if it was still you, uh, Alderman, but there was a proposal on the table at the same time to bring in video gambling. Video gambling at the time was shown to target by marketing young adults, 21 and over, as well as senior citizens. Ironically, it was, uh, it, it just seemed to be a, a, just a, a, a crazy decision to make to bring in video gambling when they're marketing and targeting the very people that we're saying, come on in and go to our businesses. But um, I just, so I, I just kept coming back to that in my mind. Um, one argument, another argument today that is, I think you have referred to, is that everybody is doing it. It's gonna be commonplace, I think you were quoted in the paper as saying. It's like that every parent here has probably told their children the same thing their parents told them, and that is something about not jumping in a lake, too. And it's, it's like that, that is the worst possible reason I could ever hear to make a public policy decision of any consequence. It's because everybody else is doing it. If anything, it should make us really look at it and say, maybe we shouldn't be doing it. So that's, that's uh, I think it's a <coughs> foolish reason. Okay, that's just a, a worse argument is this thing about the pandemic. I mean, haven't we been victimized enough? With all due respect for the people that have suffered and some died, and I know some personally, <coughs> Uh, from the COVID, but with all due respect, I mean, uh, enough is enough with that, and I don't think we need to be making amends uh, due to victimization of the pandemic. I think that's, uh, the profiteers have zero, uh, zero liability, and they have zero odds of losing any money, the profiteers of gambling, of video gambling. So I, I think we need to, um, perhaps not use the exploitation of gambling to make amends for anything like that. Um, to close the state of Illinois, as somebody said, it, no bastion of uh, ethics or balanced budgets, even thought that community standards, uh, community values should be considered and uh, decided by the community. And I totally agree with that. And I, I think we shouldn't be looking to all the other suburbs around us and all the, the boats. If anything, that tells me there's way too much out there. And we need to be a, a safe haven, a family friendly, a faith friendly community like we've always been. That's what attracts people to Payless Heights. It certainly has attracted us. So I say highly addictive video gambling is a bad bet for Payless Heights. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. Thank you. Um, I would just like to remind everybody as well um, that when someone comes up to speak, please be respectful and do not have any um, outburst or um, anything to disrupt uh, the public speaker. Yes, sir. Uh, Frank, how are you doing, lad? Oh, how are you? <laughs> how are you, buddy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I moved into Bayless Heights could, about... Sorry, sir. Can you, could you identify yourself for the record, please? I'm sorry. Brendan Caffrey. The address 12543 South 73rd Avenue, Palos Heights. Thank you. <clears throat> I love this village. I pay a lot of taxes. But Palos Heights is a great place. I grew up in Inglewood back in the day. And then I moved to Chicago Ridge in 1977. Not a, it was it was in bad neighborhood. You know what I'm saying, but I often drove through Palos Heights to go to my house in Tinley. I love Palos Heights, 
And I think there's a perception out there with video gambling that this is going to be like a, uh, a Vegas thing where you got the neon lights going down Harlem Avenue this way and this way. I know what I pay in taxes. My house is 60 years old. It's a beautiful house. I pay $12,000 in taxes. I can only imagine what these businesses here and Payless, like my friend Frank right here, and my frog, uh, friend Doug Kowalski, you're not going to see neon lights up and down Harlem Avenue. What you need to do is you need to look at the crime rates of those villages that have video gaming for so, so many years. There's no increase. Not an increase worth a piece, what I'm saying. <clears throat> I'm a capitalist. I'm a conservative. I want these people to survive. They went through the pandemic. How many? And it's tough. It's tough. But you're not going to see these neon lights down Harlem Avenue. No. You, what you're going to do is you're going to see neighborhood people going in to Frank's place and spending 20 bucks. It's not a disease. For some, it is. I love Palisites. It is like a kick-ass community. I'm sorry if I swore, but anyway. We need to do the right thing. And I know I'm just a mick, but that's my heart. And I will stay in Paris Heights as long as I can. But I also want to support the great uh, businesses. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, my name is Sharon Robson. I live at 12222 75th Avenue in Old Palace. I moved here in 1972. I voted no four years ago, and I will vote no again. Payless Heights is the community I want to keep as a community. And what the gentleman said is not true. The crime rate has gone up in many of these villages that have video gaming. And I don't want to see it here. So like I said, I will vote no, and I hope it goes to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Patty Muller. I live at 7241 Ishnala Drive. Uh, and I thank you for the opportunity for residents to comment. Uh, my parents built the house in, in Ishnala over 50 years ago. And we've been here that long. My children went to school here. My husband was a policeman. I taught in 118. Uh, my father was an alderman many years ago. Palis Heights has always been a wonderful place to live. We have an excellent police department, fire department. We have an excellent library. Everything about Payless Heights, outsiders will say, oh, you live there? Oh, it's so nice there. Oh, you guys have such a nice, nice city. I, for one, would like to keep it that way. Personally, I feel that the video gaming is a negative to bring to the city. Even without the lights and all the advertising, it doesn't matter, it's still there. 
And as far as uh, Alderman McGovern's comments about, you know, we're an island, everyone around us has video ga gambling, uh, we're the last of the Mohegans, sometimes it's kind of good to be in that place. I'm sure all of us at one time who have children have told them just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean you should do it, doesn't mean it's right. Sometimes it's better to be that outsider looking in. Everything here is just, it's just a nice area. And I really would like to see it stay that way. And I don't think video gaming is the way to go. It just is, is it may initially begin with residents, but we all know that people will travel, they will go other, everywhere if that's what they want to do. And it's not necessarily, in my opinion, the best route to take. I would like to see Palisites stay, <clears throat> stay the way it is and continue to be the kind of community where our children are being well educated. We've got a beautiful college campus here. My daughter and daughter-in-law both went to Trinity. And it's just one of the best places in the southwest suburbs to live. And I would like to stay that way. Thank you very much. You. Yes, ma'am. Oh. You're next. Yes, sir. Gino Myra, Mama Vesuvio Restaurant, 6361 College Drive. I just want to say that uh, I like to see the game and come in. It ain't going to change the community at all. It ain't going to change anything that's going on right now. It ain't going to bring riffraff to my side. They got their own places to go, their own neighborhoods. We keep our customers, the ones that want to come in our place, and uh, enjoy the game. And we keep it organized. We keep it in a room separate from everything else. <clears throat> Nobody's going to see these things. If people come in to dine, I'm not going to see it. Another thing is there's uh, restaurants don't really want it. That's fine. They're welcome not to have it. But we should have a choice if we want it or not. The state of Illinois has given us that choice. So I think Payless High should give us the same choice. We need to uh, fight every day to stay alive in this business, especially with all this. I don't want to go back to what's going on with the pandemic, but the only thing I want to say, my property tax, you talk about 12000 mine's 65000 a year. I mean, that's a lot of pennies I got to put together every day. We're selling beers for $3. That's a lot of beer we got to put together. We're selling Vesuvio dinners for $16.95. We try to keep our prices low. Reason why we want the community people to stay in our place and enjoy our meals. Also, I want to bring out that the people we lose that go other places for gaming, they might come in for dinner and they're gone. Well, what happens is they go to other communities and they get established the other communities, uh, other restaurants. Well, when they have a family meet or a family funeral or a family uh, get together, a, a christening, a baptism, they're going to these other places. We're losing revenue in our district, which is Payless Heights. I've been in business in Payless Heights 42 years. I have nothing against the people in Palis Heights. I love Palis Heights. I love the people in Palis Heights. I really don't care how the politics is going right now in Palis Heights. I think it should be changed for the gaming. Um, also, what I see is that the money built up from this gaming to the state of Illinois is to help the school districts, to help programs, to help the music district for, for the, some of these, some of these uh, schools are cutting out the music programs because they don't have enough money. Here's the money going back, the same money that you call illegally, it's going back toward the communities again. I see wonderful things going on. There's bad things, sure, there is people that overdo it. Just like people over drink, people who use too much drugs, it's in every community. You're not going to get away from it. But we want to keep it respectful in Palis Heights because I love Palis Heights. I love the people in Palis Heights. 
I love their activity. I'm always for everything they do. I get involved with everything they want to do with Palos Heights. I run a, a nice bocce league, nice people come in here. I see a couple people here that belong to my league there that come in. They know we do everything very clean and very respectful. I don't see what a problem is. <clears throat> I don't know. I haven't heard one good reason why we shouldn't have it. The only thing I hear, we just don't want it at Payless Heights, and we don't want these people to come in here. There's, Mr. McGovern, can you please tell me how many crimes have committed from these, from these, uh, you, you were once a detective, and I think you did your homework, and you told me you did, and I believe you have, sir. How many, how many crimes were created uh, from this game, uh, gambling in different communities around us? I did a study of two years. I had the police department actually do the study for two years. Everywhere around Palos Heights. In the two years, they searched 10 different suburbs. There were two incidents. They were both in Hickory Hills. Two incidents out of hundreds of places that have it. That's like saying there was two fights in two different bars. It's going to happen if it's domestic or just violent. This, you're not going to change certain things in life. And it's always going to be there. It's been there since day one. It'll never change. So I, I personally, uh, you know, I've been fighting for this for a long time because, you know, as Mr. McGowan says, I'm the guy that works 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Ask me last time I had a real vacation. 1985 was my last vacation. I had a week and a half off. So it's not because we make these things up. We're business people. We love our business. I put over $250,000 during this pandemic to keep my business alive and keep my employees working for me because I didn't want to lose them. Some of my employees are here right now, I see, and they, uh, they're proud to work with me and they, uh, I do everything I can to support them. If they need money, extra money for their families, I try to help them out. I'm no different. I'm, I'm just like the city of Palos Heights. I run a business and I run everybody in my place very clean, people need help, I help them out. There's the school districts come to me, they need money for, for the booster club, we donate. Other clubs, uh, you got the Sertoma Club, the Lions Club, so on and so on and so on. Think about it, who's the first place they go to? The restaurants, the business people, because the easiest way to, is the, the business people, the restaurants are the ones that are easy to walk into. The other places are not so easy to walk into because they're running offices. So we do our work as well. We support the city and we support it well. Like I said, I've been here 42 years. I'm very proud of being here 42 years. I want to retire out here. Don't chase me out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Warren. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lauren Kirkner, 7240 West Palos Avenue. Um, I want to apologize. I'm just kind of getting involved in this. And I have more of a question than really a statement. Uh, my children are young, so looking at a long haul here for a while yet. What would bringing the gaming into town actually do? How would it improve our town? I have heard why gaming is bad but, and I have no choice one way or the other quite yet, I'm still just trying to gather facts, but what kind of positive outcomes would we see from getting the gaming in town? How would it impact us? Do you know that? Oh, you want an answer? Well, I'll, I'll take Anybody? the first whack at it, maybe. So, so some of the arguments on the other side are that uh, the businesses, um, the additional revenue for the businesses make them more sustainable um, to, to stay in town. Um, also, there, there is a revenue component for the city. Um, a small one, though, right? Was that like that 5%? That yeah, but it's, it's difficult to qual quantify that. But somewhere, I mean, uh, in, in discussions in preparation for this meeting, somewhere around 
two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year isn't isn't too our off base of new um, revenue stream for the city. Okay. So those are the kind of the two arguments. And then is it also almost the idea that this would bring more business into town if people could have gaming in their bar or restaurant? Is that a no? The whole business. The whole. The whole business. Well, excuse. Yeah. So. It's, so it's, uh, and I'll let all the member government maybe answer this, but but the proposal is just for the existing businesses. Um, oh. New businesses would have to apply for that. Where right, this all the member government's proposal is to uh, allow the existing restaurants or that qualify with a uh, liquor service to opt in or opt out. Um, new new businesses would have to apply for it and there, there couldn't be any new businesses that are specifically for gaming i mean everybody makes fun of the lulu's cafe but you know let's just say that there's no lulu's cafe that's going to come in and, and fill a vacant storefront okay okay and to answer your question most of most of the uh answers that you were asking about come from the state gaming laws themselves first off there's Alderman Lewandowski just said, if a new, a new co company were to come in, okay, a brand new one, it would take them six months being here, according to the state law, before they can even apply for their license. Okay? Um, secondly, for example, if one of our existing companies would transfer ownership, Somebody buy it out, you know, some buy and sell, the buy and sell thing, and transfer ownership. The new company could get a temporary license within 30 days, giving him the opportunity to go through all the procedures they have to go through to apply for a permanent license. Does that answer it? Absolutely. Oh, so then the, okay. the licenses aren't just given out all willy nilly. There will be. No, you got to be strict. clean like the Board of Health to turn around and get a license. If you have any kind of a conviction, okay, any kind of a, a, a felony conviction, you will not get a license, okay? If there are multiple owners to the restaurant, each individual multiple owner has to go through the application process, which could take for a long time, sure. you know. And also, there was one other thing that I just, I just got a brain freeze. Sorry about that. <laughs> but it's, it is, it's, uh, you just can, if any, if, oh, the other part was, if you only owe any debt, fines, anything like that to the city, you can't get the license. Okay, that's perfect, that gives me a, Broad idea I, of what's I hope going I, on. I hope I oh, answered your question. Very good, I, yes. I, Thank you. And Thanks. If, there, if you have any more, time. please ask. Okay, Thank you. Good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Made it. Barbara Pasquinelli, 12210 Cheyenne Drive. You're probably thinking, it's a little old lady. She's gonna say no, and you'd be absolutely right. And the reason is exactly as the mayor stated in his brilliant statement. He just listened to every word of that statement that uh, Bob Shaw has made, and uh, you'll hear the exact truth and wisdom of that statement. That's it. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Terry Muller, 12930 South 70th Court. I oppose video gambling in Palos Heights, as I did in the 2018 referendum. I think it would debase our city. Um, I've heard a few comments that I'd like to counter to. Not allowing it, it puts our eligible businesses at a disadvantage. Uh, to someone like me that avoids places with video gambling, it would be actually a positive differentiator. Um, having an ordinance that allows it, I think, would practically force any eligible business to have it, uh, requiring them to expend their limited resources to build out these separate gaming rooms. Um, 
all the surrounding cities allow it. Um, many people have made the, I tell my children the analogy, so I'm not gonna go over that again, but Palos Park, as I read the regional reporting, had a significant number of residents object or be opponents to video gambling. Um, they decided only to allow it at Cog Hill Golf Course, which abuts Lamont and is about eight miles from the Village Hall. So it's nowhere near in Palos Park yet. Uh, this is needed to help businesses hurt by that pandemic. Many businesses beyond restaurants and bars were hurt by the pandemic. It would be a very limited number that would be hurt by this measure to allow video gambling in town. And it'd be a permanent blemish in response to a two or three year challenge. It would be better to find an approach that would help a broader range of business types for a time bounded period. Finally, the city council, several have made it clear that it was a non-binding referendum in 2018, but the voters rejected video gambling decisively. 57% rejected it. There were over 30% more no votes than yes votes. So while it wasn't a binding referendum, the will of the voters shouldn't be submarined by the city council saying, well, we didn't legally have to abide by that. Thank you, sir. Hang on, I'm gonna give everybody else a chance to speak first, sir, and then, yes, sir, would you like? Nope. Uh, my name is Frank Costa. I am the owner of Rooftop Tap, 12231 South Harlem. And uh, while well, I've heard all the comments here, uh, at the end of the day, if you drive the streets of Palos Heights, which Palos Heights I've owned, I own four properties in. I've owned property since 1979 in the Heights. I live in Palos Park. Uh, every third or fourth house is a remodel. Every fifth house is a teardown with a new house. The dynamic of the town is changing. And I understand there are a lot of people like to keep everything the same way. Uh, like to drive their old car, like to go, go to the same store. Um, we, as restaurateurs, Gino said, myself, we're losing probably 15 to 20 percent of our bar and restaurant business. People leave us, they go somewhere else. Once they know the name of the bartender, they know the name of their wait favorite waitress, we don't see them anymore. That's a fact, that's the way people are. Now, as far as addiction goes, let's eliminate alcohol. We should eliminate drugs. Let's, if we're gonna eliminate, let's eliminate bingo. Let's, elim let's eliminate Queen of Hearts. Everything, if you take it to an extreme, is an addiction. Let's eliminate fat people. I won't let anybody in my place that's overweight. We'll try to solve that problem. The, where we're at right now is that to keep the people of Palos Heights, to keep the young people of Palos Heights, the people that are doing these remodels, doing the new homes, that have got their kids, yes, in a Little League, which we support, in basketball, which we support, like Gino, okay? In all those sports, who ask us for whatever, and we try to give it up, okay, to keep this city vibrant, and that's what it's about. Old people die, we die. Okay, just like any lodge, just like a golf course. If you don't bring young blood in, the city dies. And I think right now, the crossroads is, is where do you want to go with this? And I think, I don't know what the vote was. I, I don't know what the demographics of that vote were two years ago. But I do know, I, and I've heard it, I've heard it at my bar. I've heard it, Frank, I'll be right back. My wife wants to just go pull some slats at 111th Street. 
10 blocks away. She wants to go to Crestwood, a mile away. That's a fact. They don't come back. They don't come back. So while everybody, you know, can say what they want about, you know, how good things are and how pleasant Pleasantville is, at the end of the day, count the empty stores on the street. And if they, if they can leave my place or leave Geno's or leave uh, Donna's, and if they can walk down the street and go have an ice cream, doesn't that help the ice cream place? If they find out they got to have gas and they can go to the corner at 127th, rather than being Crestwood, find out they need gas and go to their gas station. Doesn't it help, again, Pales Heights? So at some point, I mean, you got to draw a line to stand. You're either going to be for businesses or against businesses. And if so, put more nursing homes down Harlem and let's get it over with. That's it. Thank you, sir. Ma'am? Oh, hang on one second. The you're, you're on deck. Hi, Kathy Lackowitz, 7040 Edgewood Road. Um, I appreciate you having this meeting for all of us to speak, uh, but I think we spoke pretty clearly when we did this referendum, even though it was non-binding. And at the end of the day, um, I love going to Geno's, and I love playing bocce over there, but we'll not be going there anymore if there's gaming. I don't go to a restaurant to game. I go to a restaurant to eat, to socialize with some friends. Sir, and please, excuse me, excuse me. We're all gonna be respectful of the public speaker, allow her to say her piece. I just Ms. also Lackowitz. know that we have 550 homes in the original Westgate Homeowners Association, and there are no teardowns. There might be some additions, there might be some remodeling, but there are no teardowns. So I don't know where you're seeing some of the teardowns unless it's an old palace. I just, I just want to be thankful for all of you that you've allowed us to speak, but I thought we spoke already. So if we're going to go to referendum again, let's do it, because I don't think it's going to pass again. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lakowitz. John. My name's John Hanley, 7121 West 130th Street. Um, like the gentleman before, I grew up in Inglewood, moved to uh, Oak Lawn, used to, dream, used to dream about my uncle's home here in Palos that he built in 1960. I'm very active in the community. I am one of the guys that goes to his place, Gino's place, to ask for contributions for the car show, the beautification committee, the art garden. I'm constantly going to these different homeowner or uh, uh, business owners so I'm on the I'm not saying I'm in favor of gambling I have some very good friends here that obviously are not my president of my homeowners association is not my two aldermen I'm not sure what uh, your take is Mike but you know so Heather that, so I'm on the fence but we have to do whatever we can to do um, as a community to make sure his business stays in Palisites. Gino's business, I'm at Gino's once a week. So uh, whether he has video gambling or not, I'm still going to go there. You know, so I go to, I frequent all the restaurants in Palis. As you can see, I, I like to eat so uh, or have a drink. So either way, we have to make some decisions to keep these um, businesses in Palisites active. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, one second. Let me just. No, sir. Hold on. You've had your piece, ma'am. I'm sorry. That's okay. Even closer. Paula Summers, one twenty-two twenty-three South Sixty-eighth Court. I guess my question is, if we're going to do something for the 17 restaurants that are in Payless Heights that have struggled from the pandemic, what's your plan for the other businesses that have struggled through the pandemic? I, I thought I answered that for you. No, because you told me we we're going to get 5% back in taxes. I'm going to say, if you're looking for tax revenue, 
put a cannabis retailer in, we'll get more than 5%. Is that where we're going to be a year from now? I mean, I'm, if that's what we're looking for is revenue for our city, seriously, a cannabis retailer will get us a lot more than the 5%. And I, I appreciate the fact that these people are in business, but I don't know if it's fair that we're going to change something for 17 businesses when we haven't done anything for the rest of the businesses. That's where the tax money was going to come, come back, if you remember me telling you that. You said that was your plan. I will say, I think if you check with Worth, I believe they did have an incident that was related to video gaming recently. You said it was just in Hickory Hills. And I believe they put on a few more police officers after a lot of video gambling in Worth. But I will say, if you want to do something for those 17, I think you have to have a plan for everybody else also. No, what my, my plan was, was to take the money from the video gaming and put it right back into the community. So what are you I'm doing? In a business district. What, for, the okay. sign, for the sign grant program, for the, for the business. Uh, but you're increasing the, the restaurant's revenue significantly. They're going to get a 35% increase in revenue just from video gambling. Correct. I don't think a new sign is going to increase another business's that's, retail that's, by 35%. The, the, the percentages are established by state law. I understand, but I think you're missing my point, Alderman McGovern. I don't think a sign is going to increase somebody's business by 35%. Not just a sign, but how about, but how about the, the frontage of the building itself? So start making us ask make, somebody who has a new frontage in their building if it increased their revenue by 35 percent donna put a new front end did it increase her by 35 percent i believe some wait a minute it was who just put the somebody just put a driveway uh, a, a driveway and uh, a new face on their on the front of their building yeah, Pete's just did the whole mall. And I mean, Dave Heidi did okay. the new indoor golf, but that's a brand new business, and Chalet moved over to there. But I don't think they're, I mean, Pete's would have been, or. Hang, hang on, one, Ms. please, but let's be respectful of the No, I, mean, I would agree. I mean, obviously, the indoor golf increased 35% because it wasn't a business before. Yeah. I'm just saying that the monies from the gambling tax will go right back into the business community to help all the businesses. Oh. I'm an accountant. I would like to see the statistics on how you think that's going to increase their business by 35%. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Summers. Oh. Oh. Yes, sir. My name is Bill Moran. I live at 12527 West Navajo. And uh, all these people are talking, the restaurants are talking, or you guys are talking about uh, revenue. What about the Harlem overlay? All the businesses, if you go there and you pay a check or whatever, isn't there uh, a different tax compared to everybody else that's off the uh, Harlem overlay? I think I'm right. You, uh, don't they pay a higher tax? And that tax, the reason why you did the uh, Harlem overlay is to give it back to the businesses. Where is that going? Back to the business. So, uh, I don't see no difference. Uh, I mean, are you guys pulling a sham or 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 no, wag they have the to dog? Apply for it before before they can. It's the owners that have to apply for it. I think he's talking about two different things. So, when you say overlay, are you talking about the TIF district? Well, the Harlem overlay, where that massage parlor shouldn't have been, but so and so uh, uh, did a secret vote or whatever. Let that the massage parlor over there. It's gone now. But why did we ever let that massage parlor go there with the uh, uh, Harlem overlay? I know this has nothing to do with the gambling, but, uh, uh, but the Harlem overlay was for the businesses to add another tax on, onto the bill. So what is it, 9%, 10%, 12%? That money was supposed to go to the owners of the restaurant. So that's income right there. The, uh, the, uh, the video gambling is not going to make up what they're losing. I can't, I can't see where that money is going to help these guys one bit because, and then uh, so and so is talking about, you know, young people. Young people don't drink like they used to. If they don't want to go to the tavern, I hardly go to the tavern myself. I mean, I don't, 
I don't understand, is this all about income for the village? The village makes money off your utility bills. Did you ever look at your, uh, you know, your bills? They're getting money off your cell phone, this, uh, the heating bill, the, uh, so, you know, lost revenue, I just don't get it. I hear everybody lost revenue. We're not losing anything in this village. We're not losing one dime. Any given month, we're over a million dollars ahead of any other village. If you hear uh, the tax report, let's see, the treasurer, we're making money hand over fist, and you can't deny that. So I, I just don't get it. Nobody's losing any money. We, they should be getting money over the Harlem overlay. I mean, that's what that uh, program was for. So I just don't get it. I, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I know you're talking about stuff all the time. I just don't get it. I just don't get it that, that you're saying we're losing revenue. We're not losing revenue in Payless Heights. I can guarantee you that. I've never said that. We're, yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir? Hi, my name is Bob Eberhardt. I live at 13414 Southwest View Drive. I just think it should be my choice. Just like you, the mayor wrote that some of these restaurants, they should stay into their core business of selling food. But that could be their choice, to put the machines in or not to put the machines in. I don't think they have to. And when I go into a place, and I'm not a gambler, I don't have any affiliations with any liquor licenses or anything, uh, but, and I don't even gamble, but if I go into a place, I can go into any of these restaurants and have dinner or sit at the bar and have a drink and talk to people. I don't have to gamble. And when I walk in, and if I do gamble though, I could become a gambleaholic or whatever it is and gamble my money away and my family falls apart. I understand all that. But at the same bar or restaurant, I can walk in there and I make a decision, do I want to have a drink or not, right? It's my call. I could go in there, just sit down with my buddies or something and not have a drink and go home or not be a drinker at all. But I could make the decision to have a drink and I could become an alcoholic and the family falls apart and I drink all my money and all this. I think there's a same path here. I think, I, I think it's very similar, but I think it should be my choice. When I go in there, it's what am I, go, what am I gonna do? But when mayor, uh, the mayor of Orland Park, Keith Peacow, I, I heard when they were talking about this and they televised it, and back then he said 93% of all the towns and cities in Illinois had this. And that was before Orland Park and Payless Park and all these. So I guess I'm wondering, and I do think, I appreciate elected officials, I really appreciate all you do for the village or the city, but I think this should be my choice. I'm sorry. And if all these other towns have it, are we saying, but we're smarter than them? Or maybe we're wrong? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, Steve Rhodes, 12611 South Diane Drive. Uh, you have to forgive me if I repeat anything that's been said. I was unaware of this meeting, it's probably my fault, but I can speak for quite a few people that I've spoken to in the last hour that are also unaware of this meeting, and uh, they thought that this, this issue was settled when we voted. Uh, it was, it, it was a pretty much a landslide, and we thought that we were not going to have to worry about this anymore. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I understand that there's some people that want to have their choice. They can choose to go to the 93% of towns that have this and go do what they want to do. I know that my choice is not to go to a restaurant with my family and have to deal with any possibility of dealing with any of that stuff. And a lot of people feel the same, the same way. I think that what we should do is um, stand up to the fact that we are a, a community that doesn't want this in our town. and 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 tell people to come here if they, if they want to have a nice wholesome family atmosphere to 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 have a have a sandwich have a have a meal have a have a dinner and not have to worry about that i think we should promote it i think we should be, we should be proud of it i, I can guarantee you that like i said there's a there's there's a vocal 
minority of people that are here right now, but the, the city voted one time and it was an overwhelming majority that did not want this in our town. They still feel the same way. And I, I hope that you guys will respect that. Thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to? Yes, sir. My name is Dennis Sullivan. My address is 72, I'm sorry, 6728 Park Lane Drive. It seems that everybody looks at this and says this is going to be an exciting time. You can get these machines in these rooms and they'll be separate and all these things will happen. But that's always in the beginning stages. You know, it begins to, it, it begins to fall off from there. And the real problem that I see is the people that use them, can they control what they're doing? Sometimes not. Uh, and will the city, since they're going to be collecting the money, will they underwrite a lost car payment? Will they underwrite a mortgage payment that goes through the machines? These things go very, very fast. I mean, they pay down to a penny. They'll take your pennies. So if we want that kind of an environment here, I, I don't see the purpose. I really don't. Um, you know, in, in, in the beginning of everything, it all looks good. Taxes are all going to be good and everything else. Uh, my daughter's an analyst for North Shore Hospitals. They have a, a group of five hospitals. And what they're seeing now from the uh, marijuana that's been legalized, it's going up. The hospitalizations are going up. Why? because the lungs are deteriorating along with everything else in the body. So when you want to look at things like this, this is a very unique town. Uh, you, you run the risk of not having a very unique town. And this is where you got to look at it. You got to look at the long-term effect. And I don't see any value. Uh, businesses, they rise and fall, they just do. I was in business for 36 years as an electrical contractor. There's days that you look out the window and there's nothing. You just get through it. Or you, you just leave it because you're, you're done. It's not worth ha having. But at the same time, it's your call and how much you want to put into it and how hard you want to work. And again, uh, businesses today are not easy. All businesses today are not easy. So we can't put machines in all businesses. And they're not going to be the panacea of what they need as far as financial uh, support, as far as I can see. But again, I, I hope that common sense prevails, and I hope that people look at things for what they are, not for what they perceive. Thank you, gentlemen. And Thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Linda Herman. I'm at 6219 West 124th Street. I'm one of those $20 gamblers, okay? People may have a problem with it, but I need to just kind of bring it forward that there are all these other gaming facilities within very fine establishments in our area. Craples has them. Um, Jenny's has them on 111th. And... They're not bringing in riffraff. They're bringing in people that are going there for dinner. It's entertainment. That's why we go out for dinner. We want to entertain ourselves. If they want to step away and go play a machine and put $20 in, that's up to them. But to say that it's not OK and to give our business owners and Payless Heights an option, I think it's a hindrance for them because they have struggled. Everybody struggled. But I do have a question in regards to that. Would the gas stations be allowed? No. Okay. Class A are nothing more than restaurants. Okay. Class F is nothing more than the Oak Hills Golf Course. Because I believe in that scenario, you may see riffraff. And the violence that we see in the other communities, that 
people were saying, oh, because they have gaming. It's not something going down by the gaming machines. It's carjackings at the gas stations. That's what's going on in Crestwood and Midlothian and our surrounding suburbs. So I don't feel that it would bring any extra violence. I don't think people are going to a restaurant specifically for gaming. I think they're there for entertainment purposes of their dinner or cocktails, and they want to have that option of gaming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Nancy Brody, uh, 13217 Greenleaf Trail. Uh, first of all, I think we should call this what it is. Uh, it's gambling. Uh, gaming sounds more fun, uh, but it's gambling. Uh, I've had very limited experience with seeing these machines in one place where we didn't know they had them, and we went. Um, in order to get to the ladies' room, I had to go past the three of them, and it didn't look like the people at the machines were having fun. Um, they were sad looking, um, lonely looking, and bored, um, be that as it may. Um, we've been through a hard time uh, the last two years, and all the businesses have suffered, all the way from the shoe store that had to close, but you could go to Walmart and buy shoes, and then the computer store, and then the dress shop, and then the florist and the camera shop and the bakery, they all suffered. I think things are coming back. I, I hope they are. So it's not just the restaurants and the bars, which we have wonderful restaurants. Uh, we're there frequently. Um, my concern is businesses are going to have to make a big investment to put these machines in, to comply with the requirements and to pay for the machines um, I think they're, the vendors are the ones that are going to make the money. But it's a big investment on their part. And with what happens when people find another way to deal with their boredom or their, um, their wanting entertainment, uh, and they stop doing the video machines, um, Maybe they go to the boats, or maybe they'll go to these new casinos in Chicago, or maybe they'll spend it on marijuana. And when their revenue decreases because people have found other ways to entertain themselves, what's, what's the city going to do? The city is going to be put in the position of having to promote gambling because everybody is dependent on it. And that's not an appropriate use of taxpayer money to promote the gambling, to, to bail out all the agencies, the governments, the businesses that have become dependent on it. Uh, that, that's my concern about it. We have wonderful restaurants in Palos Heights. Uh, I, th I thank all of you. Um, but I don't think that video gambling is the way to, to help them. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Would anybody else uh, like to come up and speak? Uh, if, if you don't, I, can, I have um, received um, emails regarding this issue, and rather than read them all out, um, I have a brief summary. As to, yes? Sure, John. Having been around uh, uh, since uh, uh, 87 from Palisites and, and active in the uh, Beautification Committee, um, one of the things a lot of homeowners don't realize that uh, uh, the city has a program to, uh, all they have to do is apply to spruce up their buildings and a lot of restaurants and store owners have taken advantage of that. So that money doesn't come free. It's part of the wherever that money comes from, you guys know. But there is a program that if a, um, a business owner wants to put in a new <coughs> fascia, there are funds for that. 
Do you ever take advantage of that with the, no. you know? See, you I'm should. So, uh, <laughs> but there are programs, and that the city funds those to make sure the city remains as, as beautiful as it is. Thank you. Um, regarding the emails we've received, uh, or I've received, well, all of us have received and forwarded to me for, to, for me to collect, um, the, the results of the emails, the, the for and against, it's, it's about uh, three to one against um, allowing video gaming in our city. Um, on the, on the, the pro side, you know, the, I, I think, and I think we heard it here this evening, I think residents of Palos Heights love our businesses and love the fact that we have family-owned businesses and we don't have uh, franchises, um, that we have a uniqueness to our uh, restaurant community that uh, we all enjoy and, and really try to, uh, to, to go as much as we possibly can. Um, so they would love for the businesses to be sustainable. Um, however, I think um, one, one of the, uh, I guess, to encompass that, what, uh, what would we sacrifice as a city as far as image for that? I mean, uh, of course, there were some uh, concerns about the addictiveness um, as well. So I'm just kind of bringing something that um, to encompass everything besides uh, the pitfalls of, of, of gambling um, is, is the image that this city wants um, to, to have going forward um, and the, the concern that video gaming uh, would, would uh, have a negative impact on that image. Alderman Clifford, did you have something? Hello everyone, I'm, uh, I don't have anything to say on uh, video gambling. I'll let that go to another time, but I would like to make an announcement if it's acceptable with the panel and the audience, non-related to gambling. Uh, sure. Okay. I'm going to write you a letter. Uh, dear Jack, dear Alderman Jack, thank you very much for your tourist support. May God bless you for your efforts. We, collect, we were collecting clothing, but since today, Sunday, our shipper does not take clothing anymore, at least for now. However, the rest of the items are still being collected. What this is in reference to is also to this Ukraine situation going on in the world. I, a veteran of the United States Marine Corps, as Purple Heart recipient, Alderman McGovern, served in Vietnam, know very well what's going on over there. They're in need of many supplies and things that I've taken upon myself like I do other things for during Christmas time and veterans and children's hospitals and things of that nature to go up to another step on the ladder and to try to secure supplies, medical supplies, non-perishable food items for this cause. Um, if anyone's interested in that and has anything they'd like to donate and medical supplies of that, bandages, gauze, things, water bottles, etc., hydrogen peroxide, you name it, they'll take it. Hygiene uh, items, uh, you could take it to City Hall, give it to one of the girls, say it's for Ukraine relief. Uh, over at City Hall, I just tell them it's in care of Alderman Clifford. I'm going tomorrow to buy a bunch of stuff with some friends of mine, and it's going over to the uh, St. Peter and Paul <coughs> Ukraine <coughs> Church at uh, 84 <coughs> Mile West, 131st Street. The phone number there is 708 361 If you could see it, to drop off a small item or something to help the people over there and to help the children over there, they could be your children, but they're over there crying. One little girl the other day was on there singing a song from Frozen. That's how determination of those people are to preserve their freedom. And that's what it is, it's freedom. That's what we're here for, that's what we fought for. So if you could help out with this at all, or take it right over to that Ukraine church, the front doors are open, just drop in the bag with a note, a friendly note, say here to help the cause. It'd be greatly appreciated, thank you. Thank you, Jack. Up, One more comment before we go. Thank you for everyone's patience. I'll try to make this brief. Um, you mentioned earlier about- Please um, identify yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, Harry Zerbes, Z-I-R-B-E-S, 12113, 70th Court. You mentioned earlier about the emails. How many, I'm just curious, how many emails total did you get, roughly? Roughly, hang on, uh, about 30. I'm not sure if 30 emails is a good representation of the 
demographics and the overall population. I don't know if that should sway the decision one way or the other. That's such a small number out of, what, 25,000 residents we have. I mean, I appreciate you sharing that with me, but sometimes those limited surveys can really skew the overall feel. That's the only comment I have to say about it, so. Sure, thank you. Okay. Well, uh, where we're at right now, so the, the, the purpose of this public hearing was to, again, solicit uh, feedback from the community. There, there is nothing uh, that's, the, there's an ordinance in draft form um, before that were, if that were to come for a vote to the city council, it would have to come out of this committee. Um, it would have to be worked on with the T's crossed and the I's dotted, uh, which takes some time. Uh, there's a lot of feedback here, even the people that are uh, in favor of it, that they would want severe limitations on the advertising and so on and so forth. Um, but as of right now, this isn't like, you know, a one-time thing and, you know, this, is, this was your shot to let us know how you feel. So. Um, uh, I don't know uh, what, if any, uh, path forward there is right now, uh, but I, I still encourage everybody to, you know, continue to give us your feedback, pro or against, or neutral, or questions, wonderful questions, um, on this issue or any issue. Um, did anybody else have anything on this, Dais? Doesn't have to. Uh, you, so the question is, uh, will this go to referendum again? I don't know if there's an answer to that to, right now. Al Alderman McGovern is, uh, I, I, I'll let him speak for himself, but I don't think his proposal is just for it to go to the city council uh, and the city council vote on it, not to go to referendum again. We went through, I went through the city attorney and the city attorney said we're, it is not necessary to turn around and have it go to a referendum. That's why. Alderman Lewandowski and I, and the rest of us on the committee decided to have these open meetings so that we could discuss them with as many residents as possible. We don't, we want this open. We don't, we don't want to be called somebody that's going back into some back room and turn around and coming out with the ordinance. I, we actually have it on YouTube for channel four and Alderman Lewandowski said earlier, it's going to be up Wednesday. Two, two days. Wednesday. Wednesday. So Wednesday it'll be up. It should probably be on. It should be on on YouTube for two or three weeks. Two weeks. So it'll give you more than enough time to turn around and look it over. Anybody else that needs to review it, or any anybody else that feels that they were unable to make the meeting tonight. They can turn around and go on YouTube, or they can go on uh, the government uh, channel, uh, Palos Heights Channel 4, and they can, re they, they can watch it li uh, at videotaped. Excuse me, it's not going to be live. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can still email. You can still send an email. You can send a phone, make phone calls. I, I have no, pardon me? So the question is, will there be another public hearing? I don't know. I, I think that the uh, plan was to uh, bring the results of this public hearing back to the committee, which meets tomorrow, and discuss what's the next steps forward. Maybe there will be another public hearing. Maybe there won't be anything, you know, but uh, yes, John. There's always public uh, comments at city council meetings. And committee meetings. And any time that we meet in an open meeting, um, there's an opportunity for the public to um, provide public comment, and of course, any email, if it's directed to, you could send it to me, and if you want it read out in the public comment section, we'd be happy to do that as well. Okay. And <laughs> well, thank everybody for, for coming this evening and for your patience, and uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, one, 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 okay. oh. Oh, one, more, one more comment. I just want to really make one more comment. One more comment, please. I'm sorry, I, I was uh, preemptive there. Alderman McGovern would have one, one more comment, please. Um, I really want to say thank you to everybody that really did take it. And I really mean this from the bottom of my heart. I'm not kidding you. This is great. This is great. I think, I think this is better than everything else we had. But I also have to turn, as you, as you must realize, I am very pro-business, okay, very much. Uh, I've never had to put money down to open up and start a business or anything like that. 
And I pray that none of these people ever have to close one of these businesses because that loss of revenue to the city along the line goes back to the homeowner. Look at cities like, look, look at some of our, our, our suburbs that are losing money and losing businesses, losing manufacturing. Who's picking up the tab? And that's all I have to say. Thank you. They had them. Okay. They, they had them. They yeah, had thank em. you. No, no, you're fine. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for coming this evening. Have a great evening.